So today we're going to be focusing on two questions. The first question is going to be this question about what is the norm of assertion? So we've hinted at this a few times in previous lectures, like when we were talking about the lottery paradox, this idea that there are some kind of standard that we employ when we're trying to figure out whether we should make an assertion or not. And the first thing we're going to be doing is just thinking about what that standard is. And we're going to be examining Williamson's account of this, which says that knowledge is the norm of assertion, but you should assert something only if you know it. And this is going to serve as sort of a bridge from the things we've been discussing in the first half of the course to the second half of the course. Because as we said, we've kind of thought a little bit about the knowledge norm before, but we're going to look at it in more detail and think about what reasons there might be to have a knowledge norm rather than something else. The second question we're going to address is one that is going to sort of set us up um, for the rest of the semester. Because we're going to ask, what does it actually take to make an assertion? So we've seen something about what kind of epistemic status you have to be in to make an assertion properly, but we're going to ask the question, what does it take to just make an assertion of any kind at all? What does it take to be counted as making an assertion? Now, as you'll see, Williamson also has an answer to that in his chapter on the knowledge norm of, of assertion. But there are other ideas, important ideas, that are in the Strawson paper, ideas about convention and ideas about int intention, that we're also going to draw on to set up other accounts of what it takes to make an assertion. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to, by the end, see two very different pictures of what it takes to do things with language. One is a conventional or rule-governed account where there are certain conventions or rules which basically shape what it takes to be engaged in the practice. And then another very different account on which to be counted as asserting something or engaging in a speech act in general is to just have a certain kind of complicated intention for your audience to do certain things. For the rest of this video, I want to quickly set up this question about the norm of assertion. Again, this should seem fairly familiar as we've really touched on it quite a lot already. But it does seem, like we've said before, that assertion is something you can do correctly or incorrectly. So for example, contrast two cases. In one case, I check my weather app and tell you it's raining. In another case, maybe I don't know, or I know that it, it's not raining, and I tell you that it's raining. Clearly, in some sense, we want to say I've done something correct in the first case, and I haven't done it correctly in the second case. There's this distinction between whether I'm asserting correctly or not. To bring this out, you can see that in one, one of the cases, the second case, where I say what I don't know or I say what's not true, I'm blameworthy in some sense that I'm not in the first case. So this suggests that there's a kind of norm I'm following in making of my assertions. There's kind of a rule that tells me what kind of quality the statements have to have in order for me to be in a position to assert them. And there are at least three candidates for what a rule like this might look like what a rule or norm on assertion might be. So probably the simplest account is just the truth rule, which says you should only assert something if it's true. Next is a justification norm, which says you should assert something only if you have a justified belief that it's true. And finally, there's the knowledge norm, which we've seen already, but it says you should only assert P if you know P. So these are three different takes on what it takes to be correctly asserting. It's worth keeping in mind as we go along that these are not taken to be sufficient conditions. There could be other reasons for why you shouldn't assert something. They're merely necessary conditions on assertion for your assertion to be correct. They say your assertion can only be correct if it fulfills this condition, while leaving open that there may be more conditions. But these are the three norms we're going to focus on in the first half of the lecture and we'll see, as you know from the reading, that Williamson is going to argue for the knowledge norm over the other two.